When you think of prehistoric monsters, you probably picture the giant dinosaurs like T-Rex or Triceratops, right? But before these iconic beasts ever roamed the Earth, there were creatures even stranger and more terrifying. These creatures didn't just rule the land. They ruled the skies, the seas, and the swamps. Long before dinosaurs ever existed, this is the forgotten era, a time when evolution experimented wildly. Some creatures looked like nightmares, others looked like experiments gone wrong. And many were more terrifying than anything that would come later. This was the age, long before the age of giants, and it was ruled by monsters. About 500 million years ago, life was exploding in the oceans. Strange marine creatures, armored trilobites, spiky anomalocaris, giant sea scorpions. But for millions of years, the land remained barren, a lifeless wasteland of rocks and wind. Then something changed. Plants crept onto land first, mosses, ferns, towering horsetail forests, and soon after, animals followed. This wasn't the age of the dinosaurs yet. This was the Carboniferous period, the world of bugs, swamps, and giant amphibians. This is a monster of the forgotten era, the Arthropleura. Growing up to eight and a half feet long and nearly two feet wide, Arthropleura was one of the largest arthropods to ever crawl on land. With over 30 segments covered in thick, rigid plates, it resembled a moving tank, creeping silently through the dense underbrush. As it moved silently through the dense, ancient forests, its many legs worked in perfect coordination, helping it glide across the forest floor almost effortlessly. Despite its terrifying size, Arthropleura wasn't a predator. It was a herbivore, munching on decaying plants, fallen leaves, and possibly even soft wood. It feasted on decaying plant matter and perhaps soft wood. But for smaller creatures, its size and speed were enough to make it a beast of fear. Imagine being a small amphibian, helplessly watching as the massive armored body of this creature looms closer, its silent movement sending shivers down your spine. It didn't need to hunt to be scary. Its mere presence was enough to send smaller animals scurrying for cover. Arthropleura was the kind of creature that made the ancient forests feel both alive and ominous. A reminder that not all creatures were built for speed or aggression, but simply for survival in a world of giants. The Carboniferous period had another secret. The air was different back then. It was richer in oxygen, nearly 35% compared to the 21% we have today. This extra oxygen was a game changer. It supercharged insect growth, allowing bugs to grow to terrifying sizes. Dragonflies the size of modern seagulls filled the skies. The most famous among them was Meganeura, a dragonfly with a wingspan of about two and a half feet. With its long, spiny legs, it hunted other insects, and at times, even small amphibians, plucking them right out of the air. Imagine walking outside and hearing a low, buzzing roar overhead, only to see a dragonfly as big as a hawk, its massive wings slicing through the air with a rhythmic hum. In this world, bugs didn't just fly, they ruled the skies. It was a time when the atmosphere itself was a breeding ground for monsters. And every step outside was a reminder that giants weren't just found on the ground. While insects ruled the air, the swamps were home to something even deadlier, early amphibians. These weren't like the frogs or salamanders you know today. They were giants, ferocious predators of the ancient world. Crassigerinus, for example, was a monstrous eel-like amphibian with a huge mouth full of sharp teeth. It hunted anything it could swallow, fish, insects, and smaller amphibians. 
growing up to nine feet long. It lurked in the murky rivers and lakes, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Then there was Ariops, a massive, heavily built amphibian with a skull almost two feet long, filled with sharp teeth. Ariops could waddle onto land to ambush prey, but it spent most of its life in water, lurking in the shadows, eyes gleaming above the surface. These ancient amphibians were some of Earth's first major predators. They were slow, but deadly. Their predatory prowess set the stage for something even scarier to emerge from the swamps. The first true land-dwelling reptiles, creatures that would later dominate the Earth for millions of years. Around 300 million years ago, a new type of animal emerged, the reptiles. Unlike amphibians, reptiles didn't need to stay near water. They could live deep inland, laying hard-shelled eggs that survived on dry land. This opened up an entirely new world of possibilities, and evolution didn't hold back. Some reptiles stayed small, scuttling through the ferns, but others grew into terrifying predators. Dimetrodon is one of the most famous, often mistaken for a dinosaur, but it lived about 50 million years before dinosaurs even existed. Dimetrodon looked like a cross between a Komodo dragon and a sailboat. It had a giant sail on its back, formed by elongated vertebrae covered in skin. Scientists think it may have been used for thermoregulation, absorbing heat from the sun to warm up faster than its prey. But make no mistake, Dimetrodon was built to kill. It had a powerful jaw, lined with serrated teeth, the first real fangs on land. It was the apex predator of its time, hunting amphibians, reptiles, and anything unlucky enough to cross its path. Growing up to about 13 feet long, Dimetrodon was at the top of the food chain. Dinosaurs weren't even a thought yet, but monsters already ruled the Earth. As the Permian period progressed, evolution accelerated at an unprecedented rate. New reptile groups appeared, each stranger than the last. Some were bulky and tusked like a Steminosuchus with horn-like structures on their heads. Others were sleek and deadly, like an Ostrancevia, a saber-toothed predator larger than a lion. Some were armored tanks like Scutosaurus, trudging across the dry Permian plains. The Permian world was harsh, dry, hot, and competitive. Predators had to be tougher. Prey had to be smarter. And slowly, the early ancestors of mammals, called therapsids, began to dominate. But just when life was getting interesting, disaster struck. About 252 million years ago, a catastrophic event occurred. Volcanic eruptions in what is now Siberia spewed enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Global temperatures soared, oceans acidified, oxygen levels plummeted. It was the most significant extinction event in Earth's history, far worse than the asteroid that would later wipe out the dinosaurs. Over 90% of marine species have vanished. Approximately 70% of land species have become extinct. Entire ecosystems collapsed. It was called the Great Dying, and it wiped the slate clean. The monsters of the Carboniferous and Permian were gone. But something new was about to rise from the ashes. After the Great Dying, the Earth was a barren world a world of opportunity. The few survivors adapted quickly. Among them were the ancestors of the dinosaurs. At first, the early Triassic period was ruled by small reptiles, creatures like Proterosuchus, an early crocodile-like hunter. They were lean, fast, and ruthless, the perfect predators for a shattered world. Then came archosaurs, a group that would eventually split into crocodiles, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs. 
The Triassic period was a chaotic and dangerous time, but it was also the cradle of the future rulers of Earth. Dinosaurs hadn't taken over yet, but they were coming. When we think of prehistoric monsters, we often skip straight to the age of dinosaurs, but the creatures that came before were just as terrifying and even stranger. Giant millipedes are bigger than humans, dragonflies the size of hawks, crocodile-like amphibians lurked in ancient swamps, sail-backed reptiles hunting on dry land. The monsters of the Carboniferous and Permian periods shaped the earth in ways we are only beginning to understand. They fought, hunted, adapted, and ultimately paved the way for everything that came after. Without them, there might never have been dinosaurs, or mammals, or even us. They are the forgotten titans of a forgotten time. Today, their world is gone, buried under millions of years of rock, but their legacy survives. Every time you see a dragonfly dart across a pond, remember Meganeura. Every time you spot a crocodile lurking in the water, remember Crassigurinus. Every time you visit a lizard basking in the sun, think of Demetrodon's sail catching the heat. Life on Earth is a story written in survival, and the monsters of the forgotten era wrote the first brutal chapters. They may be gone, but they are not forgotten. Before the age of dinosaurs, monsters ruled a forgotten world. They crawled through steaming swamps, glided over endless seas, and fought for survival in a world without mercy. Long before T-Rex, long before anything we know, the monsters of the forgotten era ruled the earth. And maybe in some forgotten corner of time, they still do.